Assalamualaikum, welcome back to your views on the news. Uh, we're talking about Mali, uh, the Western intervention in Mali, what it means, uh, what's happening. Uh, are we seeing another uh, Iraq, another Afghanistan, uh, another mess uh, that's been left, um, all on the pretense of uh, saving a government from Islamic uh, terrorists? Um, well, on the phone I have Azhar uh, from Birmingham. Uh, Assalamualaikum, Azhar. Welcome, Stanley. How are you doing, sir? Alhamdulillah. Jazakallah khair for calling. Uh, so, your views, what do you think is happening in Mali? My views, actually, in Mali, like, briefly, I've just uh, joined your show. Well, my presentation uh, is the West shouldn't be involving themselves because it's between the own countries. It's like there's Muslims everywhere. Islam is a very big religion which is expanding. Mm. And the West is trying to contract it in a way. You know, it's like it's an anti-hate Islam, like a, they're against Islam. Mm. And everywhere you look in every state, in every country at the moment, Mali isn't one of them only on its own. Mm. Segregation in a way, if you look at it, and if I'm wrong, then, you know, please tell me. And, and, and uh, you, uh, I get the point that you think the West shouldn't be involved, but now that it is involved, what, what do you think its motives are? What, what do you think? I think the motives are of uh, oil and diamonds and all. It's, it's all about materialistic things, money and power. Okay. It's say and getting it put in and then saying, yeah, this belongs to me now. Do you know how it works? It happened from centuries ago. This war has been happening from centuries. Mm. Okay. You look at it deep down under like, clouds walls and under these, these things, really. Do you agree, brother, or not? Mm. Okay. Well, th thank you, Azar, for your views. Uh, let's go to Asma, who's calling from London. Assalamu alaikum, Asma. Assalamu alaikum, Asma. Wa alaikum salam. Um, I want to ask you just a question at the end of what I have to say. Sure. Um, China is actually making inroads into Africa, and that is really why the West wants to um, stop them, because the West is running out of money, and where else to go but to Africa? Because it, it's a trade they've done for over 100 years or more. And, um, you know, the West been there so long, over 100 years, they went into Africa. And what have they actually done for the African people? Nothing. You know, you could still see people there with dearth roads, a well in the middle of of the city or the town where people have to go and get water. Mm. It's not even clean water, and yet this country has so much wealth, and they're still living in poverty, and the West um, wants them to actually stay that way so they could steal their wealth and, um, and blame it on the Muslims. Mm. When it's they, who are the ones that are really benefiting? If you, you see on the news that um, France, you know, depends on that um, on uranium to mm. light up Paris and what have you, and the people there still living in squalor and dirt, and you know, the people there really need to be educated because um, they have the wealth and yet they're still in poverty, and they're, mm. they're not thinking why they're still in poverty. You yeah. know, the West takes their goods yeah. and then it sells it back to Africa for thousands and thousands of pounds and then makes them even more poor so they'll be able to continue to steal their wealth. So mm. what I want to ask this gentleman that you guess sure. is what um, the African themselves are doing to educate their people because I think that at the end of the day is education. Because they see these Westerners coming in to help them, and yet they're the ones that put them in this predicament and why they're in this starving. You know, you hear on the TV, oh, we're collecting for Africa. And sometimes I see programs on TV mm -hmm. where children with their ribs showing and they're dying, and, and they're saying, oh, can't you send three pounds? Yet they've got all the wealth. So yeah. what are yeah. Africa doing wrong? Mm. Why they're having to suffer like this? They mm. should be educating their people. Okay, uh, and thank not blaming it on Muslims. Okay, thank you, Asma. Um, well, the yes, question... uh, the um, Af Africans over the years have been educating their people. Not only educating their people, organizing to reverse this kind of situation, mm. and. It's not just that people blame the West, but the West has also intervened in these processes. For example, Bamako, Mali, 
was supposed to host the fourth All Africa People's Conference under Modi Bokita. The All Africa People's Conferences were introduced as one of those forums, not only to educate the African people, but also train patriots. Mm. In fact, Patrice Lumumba was one of the first beneficiaries of the first All Africa People's Conference, went back to his country, mm. radicalized from the All Africa People's Conference, and the rest of it is history. Yeah. For those of us who know about Patrice Lumumba, yeah. after he went from there, he met Nkrumah, he became part of the steering committee of the All Africa People's Conferences, went there, it's the same West that intervened. Mm. See, they complain that Africans are not educating themselves. African governments are corrupt. But whenever there's a government which is not corrupt, like Patrice Lumumba, mm. was not even allowed one year to yeah. rule. Yeah. So how do you prove whether he's corrupt or not? Mm. And for all those people who served on the All Africa People's Conference's coordinating committee, somehow they were all eliminated one by one. America Cabral. We are just marking the 40th anniversary of his assassination. Mm. The man who led Guinea-Bissau and Quebec against Portuguese colonialism in mm. the struggle. Yeah. Franz Fanon, question marks about how he died. Patrice Lumum, uh, yeah. uh, Felix Mumier. Mm. So um, the fact is that there is a way in which the people who provide a kind of education which is needed to change the situation and commit their lives, the Kwame Nkrumahs and co., there's the West again which intervenes, pays Doesn't elements to, uh, to destroy mm. it is. So what we have to do is how we organize ourselves now to stop these interventions by the West. Mm. But it's very difficult. Some of the difficulties is as a result of the kind of training we even give this our military bosses who should be fighting to protect the continent from this intervention. Like I was conversing with you, all these military bosses, including the man Sanogo who uh, staged the coup in Mali, are trained in the West. Their lecturers and professors are the FBI, CIA, and MIC's uh, operatives. You know how school is like. All of us maintain good relations with our teachers. Mm. As a result of this, these people maintain good relations with their teachers, mm. who are the CIA bosses, yeah. and all. And I can tell you that when you go to various African countries, the CIA boss even mixes freely with rank and file soldiers more than the uh, president of the republic. So we actually have a crisis. Mm. This is why it is important that we use spaces like this program mm. for those of us who want to intervene to raise the consciousness of our people so that we have a counterculture different from the cowards and opportunists who rule Africa today. Okay, well, let's uh, go to our phone lines. Uh, Peter California is online. Assalamu alaikum. Good evening. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam. Uh, your views, please. Yes, I simply want to say, obviously, finding a solution is very difficult. I don't have a solution. Mm. But I am curious, why is there not a Islamic voice mm. um, basically standing up globally to either provide both sides or at least the Muslims' voice, whether they call them militants or not, I think they deserve to be heard. And if, if they are saying something bad, if they're saying something good, the world should hear. Mm. Why isn't there someone standing up? Are you, is the question you're asking, uh, why is the media not interviewing uh, the other side? Or, or are you asking, like, generally, why is there no one in the Muslim world standing up to what's happening? I think generally it's correct. Why isn't there anyone, in particular, a Muslim corporation? Mm. Okay. Um, uh, we'll uh, take that on. Thank you, Peter, uh, for your call. Uh, let's go to Ibrahim, who's calling from Ghana. Assalamu alaikum, Ibrahim. Ibrahim? Uh, yeah, thank you very much. I'm enjoying the exposition this evening in Ghana. Uh, but the, 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 the host, hmm. this is a guest for the, yeah, Nani Kofi. Yes. Yeah. He, he appears to be a, 
a student some years ago at U.S. I want to be sure of that. Oh, yes. Uh, he's, he was in U.S.T. some years ago. U.S. About 30 oh, yeah, years wonderful. ago. Katanga Hall. Yeah, Katanga Hall. I was in Queen's Hall. Uh, yes, uh, during the Queen's Hall crisis. Yeah, uh, yeah Queen's Hall crisis, yes. Brilliant, brilliant. <laughs> yeah, wonderful. So, uh, good uh, uh, this delivery. Mm. So, we are enjoying the program. Just to say that we are enjoying the program in Ghana. Is, and do you have any question about Mali, uh, what we're talking about, Ibrahim? Yeah, well, my, my, my only problem is that, but we, you see, we cannot blame anybody. We are giving reasons for all these things to come up. Hmm. We will have to uh, uh, set our own house in order. Yes. You see, some of the stories that, that, some of the stories that we hear, it is very bad. Hmm. Cutting people's hands, you know, I mean, why? Yeah, because yeah. Islam do not tell us to do these things. Mm. So, for instance, you can you can you can you can rule around the uh, maybe Islamic principles, but the barbarism it, it doesn't call for that. Mm. Mm. You see, okay. on issues of human rights, nobody, no no sane person will sit down and watch some of these things happening. Mm. Mm. So Absolutely. we we rather call the rough onto us onto ourselves, mm. and this time we bring people. I mean, for intervening. Okay. That's my, 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 my stand on this. Okay, thank you, Ibrahim, uh, for your call. Yeah. And if we just go back to what... Uh... Yeah, Ibrahim, thanks for reminding me of those uh, great days of the Queen's Hall crisis. <laughs> and uh, when, what Peter mentioned, uh, uh, which is about uh, a voice, why, why is there not a voice? I mean, he specifically mentioned a Muslim voice, but uh, not necessarily, does, it doesn't have to be a Muslim, but in Africa, is there a voice that is standing up to... Uh, um, this kind of uh, yes, imperialism. The, the, yeah, yeah. The fact is that what is happening in Africa now is that the forces which are standing up through the social movements and other forces are not as publicized. And so I hope that just like I've come here today, and people like Ibrahim have remembered our old days when we were all growing up, uh, we will get more of our types. On to programs like this. Mm. But what's happening is that the media is dominated by the forces which play the puppet role. Mm. And there is a structure in how to create the puppets. The way the teachers in the West train them, mm. it is necessary for us to have independent arenas where we can train our yeah. officers. Yeah. Today at a meeting, I was talking about the importance of African unity. Mm. You see, even if we can get those forces, same forces, into a group like the way we do, we had the All African People's Conferences. Mm. In fact, I'm working with other colleagues in Ghana to revive the legacy of the All African People's Conferences because we are approaching the 55th anniversary okay. of the All African People's Conferences. No, sorry to interrupt you. I'm going to take uh, Muhammad, who's calling from Nigeria. Uh, Sonica Muhammad. Okay, we've lost him. Um, Akta is calling from Scotland. Asalaamu Alaikum, Akta. Akta, Asalaamu Alaikum. Hello, Asalaamu Alaikum. Alaikum you're on air. Your views, please. Yeah, how are you doing, brother? Alhamdulillah. I, I managed to get through. Jazakallah ah. Jazakallah khair for your call. Go for it. Yeah. Um, I don't know if this has already been covered, but um, I just don't seem to understand how we managed to get ourselves into wars, war after war. Mm. How you managed to bend in this recession? Mm. So we managed to kind of come out of Afghanistan, and now we're ex excelling the wars in Africa. Mm. So how, how do we manage to fund all these mm. um, Good question. times of tough economic things? So I just want to understand that. Okay. Thank you, Akta. Uh, good question there. Let's go to Fatima, who's calling from London. Assalamu alaikum, Fatima. Hey, assalamu alaikum, brother. Wa alaikum salam. Uh, how are views? you? Yes, I'm commenting from Ghana, I'm a Sierra Leonean, but I've been following this election. Mm. You know the gentleman that is standing against John Mahama? That gentleman, I've been watching all the, um, mm. the, the debate and everything. The gentleman could just leave the president alone. He deserves what he had, <laughs> and they should listen to the voice of the Ghana people. That man is just a desperate folk. 
Mm -hmm. Honestly, he's just too desperate. I don't like him. We're dealing with young people. John Mahama is young, and I like him. Just the man, just leave the man alone. Okay. I really don't like that man. All right, thank you, Fatima, for your view. Uh, let's take Abu Bakr, who's calling from Nigeria. Assalamualaikum, Abu Bakr. Assalamualaikum, Abu Bakr. Yeah, good evening. Good evening, you're on air? Yes, I'm on air. Yep, your views, please. Yeah, please, uh, um, thank you very much. Uh, for, I'm enjoying the... Yes, I'm in here. I can hear you very well. Yes, um, thank you very much for giving me the chance to contribute a little bit about what is happening in Mali. Mm. Yes, the truth is this. Um, all these coalition powers have to come and help Mali get rid of this uh, the so-called terrorists or people that are actually fighting for an independent northern Mali, that is the terrorists. Mm. But if you now look at what is happening in Nigeria, mm. which is my country, yeah. we have the terrorist activities going on, killing, indiscriminately, of whether you are a Muslim, you are a Christian, all in the name of Islam. Mm. We call them the Boko Haram people. Yeah. And we tell you they are part of the Malian activity. They are contributing. They are, they are almost there. They are part of the, the mm. rebellion going on in Mali. Mm. Mm. So I have not seen anything wrong with the superpowers actually coming in in order to uh, get rid of the people so that we can have peace in Mali, Niger, Nigeria, and uh, part of West Africa. Okay. Yes. In addition to that, um, the gentleman sitting there, I'm very happy to have that he mentioned what actually happened in the 1990s in Algeria. Uh -huh. Yes, when the Islamic Party, you know, actually, they have been winning all the elections, but they are not allowed to come to power. Mm. Yes. If you now look at what's happening in Egypt. Yeah. It is actually exactly what is happening now. They will never allow any uh, pro-Islamic government come to power okay. now in Egypt. They are using people like the El Barade and Co. in order to bring confusion. Mm. Okay, so, uh, <coughs> Bokar, Jazakallah Khair, um, uh, for, for your contribution. I'm going to move on because we, we, we haven't got much more time. And I'm going to take uh, Ahmed, who's also calling from Nigeria. Assalamu alaikum, Ahmed. Ahmed? Ahmed, yes, I'm on the line. Assalam. If you turn your volume down, please, and uh, tell us your views. Okay. Ahmed? Yes. Yes, I'm on with you. Yes, you're, yes, you're talking to me now? Yes. Your views, please, yeah, Ahmed. I... Hello? Yes, Ahmed, I can hear you. Okay. So I wanted to add to what my brother is just saying mm. from Ghana, that uh, what really is happening in Africa, and Niger especially in Nigeria, where I know, these crimes are perpetrated by those in official positions yes. in order to, black, to, 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 to defend Islam black. Okay. Uh, that is one of the uh, one point that I wanted to contribute, and uh, what my also brother said, it is uh, because of uh, lack of uh, mean education. Okay. And uh, because uh, our education system is planned by the West, and that is why uh, it's planned and organized by the West, mm. and we are not uh, <clears throat> given that. Uh, to, uh, okay, Ahmed, so, sorry to interrupt you. I have to stop you because we've literally got a few minutes left and I do want to give Explo a chance to uh, respond to some of the things. If, if we just take one thing that Akhtar said earlier, which is, you know, the question, in this country we're in a recession, uh, you know, where everyone's poor, benefits are being cut, uh, everything's being cut, uh, people are, are, are suffering. Um, how, do, how does a country like ours uh, find the money to go uh, on a, a tour uh, in Mali? Yeah, it's precisely because the, the government has no 
answers to the problems that it's facing, it has to resort to a distraction, mm. to distract attention, to make it appear as if there are some enemies somewhere that we should unite to, to hunt. Mm. Then they duck the issue of how to solve the problems that they don't have any answers to. Yeah. You see, um, I would want to also end on this issue about um, how do we deal practically with the problem? Because somebody was asking that yeah. question. And I'm saying that we should go back to Nkrumah's idea of the African High Command. By establishing an African High Command, we will not need a U.S. command, Africa on our source. Mm. We we'll have our own High Command. The fact is that I don't think that Africans are more inferior human beings than any other human beings. So whatever other human beings can do, we can do. Yes. Some Africans go to America and join the American Armed Forces and go to Iraq and all other places. Mm. Those people are capable of being the high command on the African soil. And also to this about education, because the question was asked specifically about education. Mm. I'll take this liberty to invite people to an annual conference we are organizing in Ghana to uh, educate people about alternatives, which is Kilombo 2013, which is starting from 27th September to the 29th of September. Um, they can visit www.kilomboeducation.org or um, they can contact Islam Channel and Islam Channel can contact me and we'll get them to yeah. come down to Ghana in September because the issue of education, mm. an alternative is the solution, is the beginning of solving these problems. And uh, just finally, uh, the point about uh, the people in power, uh, because you, you know you said it's corrupt. They're, they're working at the uh, benefits or behest of their teachers, which is the West. But we do see ordinary people then vote these people back in. Is that going to change? Yeah, that's why we have to uh, develop a certain mechanism. One, you see, these people get into politics as if it's national lottery. I was talking to some people, and I said, look, people remember Nkrumah a lot in Ghana. Whether he's gone, even the people who claim they are his followers, nobody votes for them, but Nkrumah's name is remembered by everybody. Mm. When Nkrumah went to the 1945 Pan-African Congress, it took six years for him to become leader of government business. It took another six years for him to become prime minister. So he prepared, he had a vision. You meet some of these people who have become presidents, they themselves never even dreamt Mm. that they would get into that position. It falls on them like a national lottery and they are not prepared for it. They will have no vision. Mm. So that's the main reason why we even have to have this education program. We have to build grassroots organization which will have to prepare future leaders. In fact, the first radio program I ever participated in was called Leaders of Tomorrow. That time when we were students, during the same Queen's Hall crisis that Ibrahim was talking about. Yeah, yeah. And two of us participated in that program. The other person is now the minority leader of uh, Parliament in Ghana, say Chairman Sabunsu. Thank you, uh, Expo. I have to uh, stop you there and uh, uh, thank you for joining me this evening and giving us your time. Apologies to my callers, I couldn't take your calls at the end. Uh, you know, we do run out of time. And I think you're right, uh, you know, we, we do have to look to ourselves. Uh, we have the answers. And I think uh, it's a very good idea to build from bottom up. Mm. Uh, top down uh, always is fraught with problems, as we know and we can see. I'll see you next week for another show on your views of the news. See you later. Assalamu alaikum.